Hi everyone and welcome to today's A Little Lunch Online number 43, uh, which is my lucky number for some reason. So uh, I've got a really good feeling about today and also because of the amazing guest artist that um, I'm going to be chatting to today, Heidi Everett. Um, but before we uh, get into our chat, just want to acknowledge um, the land on which I am. So I'm on Boonrong land. Um, we're also the Office for Arts Access Victoria is based, of which I'm the CEO. Um, and it's great to see so many faces with us. Um, just want to do a tiny bit of housekeeping. So uh, today's little lunch, as per always, is 30 minutes long. Um, and it's being recorded um, and will be uploaded to the Little Lunch Online uh, website uh, for viewing afterwards, which is uh, www.llol.com.au. Um, we ask that you keep your microphones muted. I think we're getting into this rhythm, aren't we? Keep your microphones muted unless you're speaking and we'd love you to introduce yourself in the Zoom chat, uh, letting us know whose country you're on today. And you can also use the chat to ask any questions um, that you might have. We've got live captions today, live paraphrase captions being provided. So if that's something that you'd like to access, um, then that can be done by using the uh, closed caption button at the bottom of your screen. And also we've got Linda um, as our Auslan interpreter today. So if um, you want to make use of the interpreting, uh, please click on Linda's picture and pin it to your screen. So today I've got the pleasure of um, speaking with the multi-talented Heidi Everett, who I have had the pleasure of working with in many guises over the last few years. Um, and as way of a short introduction, we're going to uh, show you a tiny uh, bit of stand-up comedy that Heidi worked on a couple of years ago with Nellie Thomas. And I watched it last night and found it hilarious. And Heidi wanted to just show a snippet and I was like, no, we going to show it all. Um, it runs for about two and a half minutes and uh, yeah, enjoy. So if we can go with the video, that'd be great. Thanks, Norm. My name is Heidi Everett. I know what you're thinking. Thank you, 25 years of paranoid schizophrenia paid off. <laughs> I'm wearing sunnies because I have sensory overload. So sensory overload is when all your senses are up really high. So things like sound, sight, smell, taste and touch, they're up really high. So if you could turn down your thinking and switch off your pheromones, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I have schizophrenia and the word schizophrenia actually comes from two different languages. So Greek, schizo, and old Latin, phrenia. So basically, two different countries got together and created a word. <laughs> That's not mental illness, that is a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> They should be giving us certificates when we're diagnosed. Congratulations, world peace. <laughs> <laughs> so I see a psychiatrist, I'm sure many of us here do, and a psychiatrist doesn't really ask you anything that a friend wouldn't ask you. Hi, how are you? How's your week been? Want some drugs? <laughs> the main traits of schizophrenia is hearing voices. That's what my psych told me and then took a call from his wrist phone. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Siri? What's that? <laughs> Turn left in 50 metres. Not now, Siri! <laughs> <laughs> At least 
people with schizophrenia don't use their arms to communicate. <laughs> we invented Siri. We should be collecting royalties. <laughs> Doing comedy is interesting and one of the ways Nelly says that we can get material is by practicing observation. <laughs> so I booked a ride on the Melbourne Star Observation <laughs> Reel. I saw Melbourne, I didn't get the joke. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. Um, it just brought me so much joy and laughter watching that last night. And I feel like I know you um, in so many other forms. I know you as a musician, as a filmmaker, as an incredible producer, as a director. Um, but this was sort of my first insight into your comedy. And um, I'm sure I've missed off many other things on the list. but is comedy something that you're still doing? How was that for you? Is it something you think you'll go back into? Tell us more things. Hi, Caroline. Hi, everyone. And first of all, I just want to mention that my fantastic Zoom microphone, microphone broke just before, so I'm having to use computer audio. Um, you can personal message me in the chat box if, if you need some um, extra clarification for what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, so stand-up comedy, who'd have thought? Um, <laughs> I absolutely adore a sense of humour. I love seeing the funny in things anyway, and I love being around people who can see the funny in things as well, because generally those people have been to some pretty tough places to earn that sense of humour. So, you know, I, I never thought I'd be doing stand-up comedy ever. Um, but I've, I've always loved laughing at silly things and, you know, I'm from Wales, so <laughs> it's quite natural to bit of, have a bit of a laugh at things that really annoy you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I might, I might do stand up comedy gig again one day, but at the moment I'm pretty flat out producing, um, helping other people find their, their stand up comedy and, and their creativity at the moment so yeah <laughs> I mean I've got a list as long as my entire body that we could talk about but what are some of the things that you might be working on at the moment that you would be happy to share there's there's actually two major things I'm working at the, on at the moment and I've just come off Mojo Film Festival which celebrates World Schizophrenia Day in May on the 24th of May and Mojo Film Festival this year was the only event that I could find happening around the entire world. So it's, um, COVID's mm -hmm. been very interesting and it's just, it's proven a point to me even more that um, what we do with Mojo Film Festival is quite unique and quite needed. And uh, Mojo is through an organisation I founded called Skitsy Inc. S-C-H-I-Z-Y, Inc. And we do lots of creative things around, you know, giving people a voice. <laughs> Heidi, you've just gone muted. That's, yep, yeah, that's it. Yep. You build okay. your back. <laughs> um, can you say a bit more about Mojo? How long has it been around? Um, obviously, it came out as, of Skitsy Inc. Um, but yeah, how long has it been around? How did it run this year? And can people still access it? Yeah, so Mojo Film Festival started about three years ago. And before that, Skitsy Inc. had done something called Skitsy Inc. International Jam. So we jammed music at the Northcote Social Club with bands from around the world with a beautiful song called One Love. And um, I spliced together all these bands from around the world and we played it on the big screen. And then we had something like 50 musicians on stage at North, Northcote Social Club. And I thought, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> it's, there's gotta be an easier way. 
Um, so a couple of us at Skitsy Inc started to plan Mojo Fell Festival because one of the things I learned while doing Skitsy Inc Jam is that if you Google video or film about schizophrenia, you come up with this whole list of films about schizophrenia and not by people with schizophrenia. Mm. So to me, it was just, okay, we need to do this. We need to create a new genre of filmmaking. And it, it, it was just really obvious that I didn't want to see another educational film made by, you know, a mental health service or a film student <laughs> or somebody who has, hasn't even got lived experience making films about schizophrenia. And, you know, it's always dark and scary and it, it's never anything other than that. And so I thought, well, let, let's try it. So Mojo Film Festival, that, that's where it came from, was Amazing. just this, yeah. Um, but Skitsy Inc's been going for about 10 years. Um, and it, it is around schizophrenia, but we've got people from all diagnosis in Skitsy Inc. So we welcome anyone that's been in the public mental health system, especially. Um, and that, you know, that's, that's a lot of people. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's quite interesting what we're trying to do. And we meet a lot of um, barriers, but we, we're trying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so Mojo happened online last weekend on Sunday, I think, um, and it was all, it was live on YouTube or it happened on YouTube. Um, I am guessing that some people that are in this group were there based on your comments. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, is there a way that people can still access those films if they're interested, Heidi? Yeah, so if you go to YouTube and type in Mojo Film Festival 2020, there, hopefully YouTube hasn't banned us, but um, just keep <laughs> looking around and you'll come up with the, the actual event itself, the whole event from start to finish, and it goes for an hour. And mm -hmm. there's quite a, a lovely surprise guest that says hello about halfway through. And there's chats with filmmakers and there's some international films and there's a bling party. Um, you know, and I just actually, uh, Je Jess is online with us. Hi, Jess. Je Jess was in that stand-up comedy um, project that I did as well, and that was with a fantastic comedian called Nellie Thomas. Um, mm -hmm. She kind of mentored a, a group of us to be stand-up comedians. <laughs> so hi, Jess. And, and <laughs> Jess is in another project that we're doing at the moment called Qualia Theatre. So it's just quite a, a family. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's Caroline, a, I think you're in that too, in some small way, but actually, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to embarrass you, but. <laughs> I mean, that's a gorgeous segue into talking about Qualia. So I had the absolute honour and privilege of working alongside you um, while you were making Qualia last year. Um, Catan Hall as part of Darabin Arts and um, yeah I wondered if you were happy uh, were, what can you tell us about Qualia what it is what it means what the name means um, and also what was the work that you produced and why was it important so many questions so, sorry Heidi so Caroline you were dramatic for Qualia and you you actually had a starring role I was being silly when I said yeah, small role, but, <laughs> you know, without you, Caroline, we wouldn't have got started. So thank you. And um, so Qualia is another need project. So when you go into a public psych ward, you're not really in a state or a space of mind to take photos and document the human rights issues that are going on to you and all around you. Um, I don't see anyone taking selfies in public psych wards or... You know, there's none of that. So public psych wards, they're, they're horrendous places. They're absolutely shocking. So I thought, how do we bring those stories to life if we don't have film and if we don't have photography? And, you know, and they, play, they only play us when we're on 60 minutes being slammed against the wall. So I thought, well, Qualia also brings to this, it's a stage piece and it's devised theatre. 
So it's really important that people who are performing in qualia are bringing their own lived experience stories to the stage. Um, I'm sorry, I've got a police helicopter buzzing my house right now. So <laughs> this could be live theatre about to happen. <laughs> it's right over my house. Um, so it's, uh, so Qualia, it's, it's 24 oh, hours, isn't it? It's 24 hours in a cycle. Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. And so it's the lived, it's different perspectives of the same space. And I think, you know, qualia is a, is a philosophical term. And if you Google it, it just means a personal experience of a shared situation. So, you know, if we all taste a piece of chocolate, it's the same chocolate, but the way we experience it will be very different based on our memories, our upbringing, our biology, so it's kind of like 24 hours in a public psych ward is the same regime all around the world, basically. There's nothing to do. You're treated with medication. You're chucked out. That's it. So with qualia, um, it was really important to give people who don't normally get the microphone a space to advocate their stories. I didn't want the same... <laughs> same same people advocating the same stories so in qualia at the moment um hadley johnson is deaf and she tells her story about what it's like to be in a psych ward with no access to interpreters you know and the journey to that psych ward you know and then jess i'm, I'm sure i'm not going to speak for you but jess has got her story and then there's another fella xavier Gualt who tells the story of somebody lost in the system, somebody who never gets listened to ever. So, you know, and then hopefully that keeps kind of evolving and we get to tell more, more stories and advocate other human rights stories. So, so Heidi, I mean, it was an incredibly powerful and I had very little to do with it other than just asking more questions. Um, it, it was all, it was all you, and I think that's really important to acknowledge. Um, um, you've just got, you've just received a, a Thrive grant from the City of Port Phillip to evolve Qualia. Can you talk a bit about the evolution? What's going to happen next? Yeah, so, we, uh, you know, one thing about being an artist is, is the amount of work that goes into being an artist behind the scenes. And one of those is grant writing. Um, I'm, I'm a fantastic failed grant writer. <laughs> I try and try and try and I never get one. And then finally this year, I got one. <laughs> I got a grant. <laughs> Yeah. So it was through um, City of Port Phillip and with Arts Access Victoria, and it was specifically for artists who identify as disabled, deaf, or with mental health lived experience. And so we've got a grant to put on a short film of Qualia. And so Jess, Xavier, um, Hadley, myself, and the filmmaker, Rachel Edward, we're going to make the short film version of Qualia. And I'm sorry, I didn't type this in before, but Qualia is spelled Q-U-A-L-I-A. -A. And if you Google Qualia, you'll either come up with a resort on the Whit Sundays or Qualia Theatre. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> and I love it when people check into Qualia on our page and they say they had a fantastic time. They feel renewed. They're starting life with a new energy. It's great. That's amazing. That's so brilliant. So, amazing. yeah, Qualia is going to have a life, you know, and, and we've just also um, got a, quite a really good performance opportunity with the University of Melbourne. So that's next year. And yeah, I'm really excited about Qualia and hopefully I get to tell a bit of my story in another side project soon and tour it can around you tell us about? Can you tell us about that side project? Well, you know, it's one of these damn grant things. 
so I'll just keep applying until I win. <laughs> but I'm <Great>. determined. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but that that's about where Quali has come from. You know, I haven't just said, let's make a, a, a theatre piece about psych wards. It's actually come from, you know, 30 years of being in the public psych system. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'd like, I'd like to tell my story too. So I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> That's brilliant. Because I think you're right, Heidi. Qualia was very much about, about Jess and Hadley and Xavier's story. And um, you very much held the structure for the piece, but it was very much um, those genuine stories from people um, that you that you held beautifully in that space and also your commitment to making that space um, accessible in te for audiences. So the whole thing had embedded um, sign language interpretation um, and, yeah, it was amazing. Um, so I'm very excited about what happens next with it. Thank you, Caroline. Yeah, so am I. I feel good about it. Like, I tried to make a short film about a dog in a psych ward. And I, you know, I spent nearly 10 years trying to do that. And I had so many people involved. And it just it just kept hitting a, some kind of barrier to say, no, this mm -hmm. isn't what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. So the fact that this project has succeeded and it's succeeding well, I'm wrapped. <laughs> so great. Wrapped. And... It I remember when you when we finished the last show, everyone was just like, we need to do it again. And it was just like, yes, absolutely, you do. Let's try and make that happen. So you're yeah. making it happen, which is amazing. And well, I'm really grateful to Xavier, Jess and Hadley because it's, you know, their stories and their effort. And, you know, it's devised theatre. It's, it's not me saying you need to say this. Yeah. So, and I hope that um, future versions of Qualia will have other people's yeah. stories as well so if you're out yeah. there and you, you think you've got a unique perspective of psych wards get in touch with me I'd love to hear from you hmm. and yeah. I also want somebody to play the psych nurse because I don't want to do it anymore oh that's right you made the cameo apparently I do it really well people said to me <laughs> oh you make the best nurse vinegar tits and I said I wasn't trying I was just being me <laughs> I can't act and they said, oh, you were fantastic. You were so cold and uncaring. It's just so not you in real life. So that's really <laughs> interesting that they came across in performance. Um, Heidi, I want to move us to into the discussion about the future. So obviously, Qualia continues, um, which is brilliant. And I suppose one of the things that's been a theme through these little lunches is really thinking about... Um, in this kind of post-COVID, wherever we go world, this supposed new normal, which I still hate the thought of, um, what, from your perspective, is, is crucial in whatever we could create next? Um, yeah, just a little question. I think that Zoom has opened up a new possibility. I think... Um, Forcing or, you know, I've heard this wonderful saying that tradition is peer pressure from dead people. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> and that's not my saying. I've just heard it around. Yeah. And I, I know that tradition is great for, you know, stories and things and, and bringing, bringing through those things. But it also makes us do things that we don't need to keep doing. So mm -hmm. the fact that we're forced to go into the city to meet for an hour long meeting and then make our way back out into the bush, it's why mm -hmm. when we could just do this. Yeah. So I also think that the outdoors has become a little bit more important in people's thinking. So I'd love to see the invent or the reinvention of, of amphitheatres and you know outdoor art making and why do we have to sit in a square theatre in rows of seats looking at a, somebody on stage I why you know when we could do it <laughs> under a tree or 
Yeah. You know, go for it. Go, go exploring with theatre and, and get it outside. And why do we have to sit in such, you know, structured spaces? <laughs> so yeah. I love operating outside and I love being in natural spaces. And I, I don't know why we have to sit at square tables in square rooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even now and with, with Zoom, you know, we're all in little boxes in rows. Mm. Uh, it's, it's kind of like, wh why are we doing this? Why is everything so square and regimented? But, you know, I guess that's what our brains crave. So we've got to do what our brains crave, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. I think you're... Um, I've been having quite a few conversations with... Uh, deaf and disabled artists over the last week and one of the really the point that you make about people are feeling less exhausted because they're able to create the space that works for them so they can work in the space that completely works for them and they're not having to rally all the energy that often it takes to put ourselves into the big wide world and have to deal with all of the stuff that might come at us on that journey so people are kind of like yeah I can move from the couch to a desk or I can do this on the couch or I can do this in bed if I need to and um, it really is opening up so many people I think you're absolutely right. Well I, I do think that when you've got social disability which I, I do identify with social disability and to get to to get into the city, I've got to navigate public transport mm. and horrendous social spaces, and that I can, mm. ugh, you know I've worked out a, a haven map to get to the art centre, yeah, yeah. you know, so I know where all my little secret quiet cafes are, and you know I'm not going to give them away, but there's quite a few around Flinders Street Station, and I I have to go into them, calm down, be in the quiet and then go to the next section of the journey. And so doing this is fantastic, but I also do miss being at projects. I, I miss, you know, meeting Jess and Xavier and Hadley and that, that doing part, I really, really miss that. Mm. Yeah. The, the real human contact, like just being in a room with that, shared energy it doesn't translate the same way on a screen um yeah. i've been hearing that a lot from people yeah um, and like i don't have mirrors in my house so being on zoom is the most i've had to look at my face in for 48 years it's a <laughs> shock <laughs> is that what i look like <laughs> you look fabulous um i'm wondering if anybody has qu any questions any uh, anything you want to throw in the chat to um, for the last couple of minutes before we finish up? Hi everyone, I can see the chats. Hello everyone that said hello, that's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, just want to say one thing that mental illness is so stuck in the medical model. Mental illness, you know, illness, who uses an illness to describe their reality? So if you if anyone out there can invent a new term, let's yeah. give people ten million dollars to invent a new term. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. And thank you, Caroline. Thank you so much. And you know, feral arts and the interpreters and the captioners and everyone, thank you so much for having me here today. You know, just you know, it's really honoring. And this is my dog Peanuts. He's also 48 years old. Huh? Wow, he's looking good for 48. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he came from Wales to Australia with me a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Um, that's kind of us at time. But thank you all so much for joining us. Oh, um, oh yeah, show people the sign. So this was made by Hadley Johnson, who is proudly deaf. It's the sign for qualia. Jess, can you, can you, yep, there we go. <laughs> but it's Q, 
and the three different perspectives and the past, today and the future and looking at different perspectives. Yeah. Brilliant. And we've all got these very beautiful t-shirts with the sign drawn on them. Um, but you only get them if you're in the gang. Yep. And if you do a film <laughs> in Mojo, you get one of these. Yeah. <laughs> and it's heavy. It's not a light piece of rubbish. It's really heavy. I've got a sparkly blue one because I, I managed to sit on a panel and I got one of those. So I have a, a Skitsy Ink star very proudly on my desk at work. Thank you, Caroline. You're a great. Um, last year at Mojo, we had a panel of three very distinguished filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, and Caroline moderated the panel. And we're at the town hall, and really looking going forward to going back to Acme next year. <laughs> yeah, be amazing. Yeah, be amazing. All right. Thank you all so much for being here with us. Thank you, Heidi, for sharing your artistry your wisdom and just your general loveliness with us um it's a joy as always to chat Thank with you, you. <laughs> um tomorrow uh tomorrow's little lunch is uh not up happening as it usually does but it's a kind of a feedback session about how the little lunches will continue from here on norm do you want to say that more articulately than me yeah on fridays we're going to start to a lot of those kind of great future conversations have been happening through the lunches, try and bring them together and think about what our shared vision for the future is. So we're starting that sort of work. And tomorrow we're going to think about um, an event that we're planning for November this year, the month of November as a online festival and conference for the art sector. So everyone's welcome to come in and um, give us your ideas. It's kind of a brainstorming session tomorrow. So it'd be really great to get you involved. Thanks very much. Great, great session, Carolyn and Heidi. Brilliant. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks again to the Feral team and Arts Front um, for creating this space for us to occupy. Have lovely Thursdays. See you all soon. <laughs>